seems like the bad economic news is almost delayed. Like at first it was about the virus and infections and deaths, and now it's about layoffs and rising unemployment numbers. And I'm curious just how hard you think this is going to hit the tech economy in general. There's a lot of news that's still about to come out, right? So we've dealt with like a health crisis first and foremost, and now, now we're going into this moment where there is a, a massive reset that's happening on the economic side, but also just from a personal side. I think on, on one hand, there's going to be an element of this which is uh, very difficult just from a macroeconomic standpoint. Um, but also there are some really interesting opportunities that get created as a result. So, so one of the things that we've been thinking about here at Floodgate is where are the, the massive resets that have happened um, as a result of this sort of COVID uh, inflection point that we've seen within uh, the, the economy, within the country, within the world. And we would categorize it within four different categories. One is more the obvious workplace reset where we've th seen things like remote work become more of an obvious part of shelter in place. Uh, a second would be the business reset where we've been really influenced by the fact that people are behaving differently um, and they are spending differently. And as a result, uh, businesses actually will look different uh, coming out of shelter in place. And then the more fundamental pieces are that behavioral and financial reset. The behavioral reset is how do people spend their money? How do people spend their time? Who do they spend their time with? And then on the financial reset side, we are seeing things like what you've just pointed out, unemployment numbers that are staggering in scale. And then uh, coupled with that, the largest central bank and government intervention we've ever seen. And so how does all of this play out? Um, one of the things that I look at as an early stage investor is what are the massive inflection points? And the thing that I think is most interesting today is that if you look at the numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics over the last 20 years, buckets of spend have never really changed for consumers. They are pretty stable over time. But in the last two months, people actually have shifted fundamentally their behaviors in terms of where they spend their money and how. And so, so the result of- like, like, how long does that last? How long does the economic reset last? How long do we feel the economic pain? I mean, is this like a half a decade, a decade, multiple decades? Yeah, and I think that that's the piece that is very hard to know. So this kind of reset we've never seen before, right? And so from that, you see, pain and opportunity. So how do you communicate and who do you communicate with? We've seen this shift to video communication like we're having right now that was unprecedented. Um, who do you actually relate to and how do you communicate with them? I'm communicating with college friends that I haven't been in touch with in a long time. Um, and then we're also seeing retail shifts. So as an example, people are actually buying from different stores which gives new opportunity to people. So I think if you say, even within this last two months, we've seen opportunity, right? So we've seen people adopting new brands and new categories of spend that we've never seen before. And so there's both that pain element, which could last, we're seeing 18, 24 months at least, and then there's also the opportunity of new categories being born, which is what excites me about the next economy. Now, Airbnb is laying off 20% of their workforce, Uber laying off 14%. I know you're on the board of Lyft and you can't speak to, to Lyft specifically, but Lyft laying off 17%. How many more layoffs do you think we're going to see across the board, given the sort of delayed impact of the economic issues? I think that across the board, what we're seeing is, whether it's in tech or in other industries, um, that impact will continue to roll out. I think some of these businesses have decided to go and be more aggressive in the early days uh, to try to get control of the spend um, and the expenses that they're seeing. Um, and if you look at Airbnb's case, just react to the the revenue um, hit that they've taken, right? And so 
I think that that part of the economy in terms of the job cycles, we're going to see huge impact. One of the numbers that I was uh, talking to a friend about was the fact that the, the people under the age of 45, there's something like over 50% of those people are have either been laid off, lost a job, or are working less hours than they did before. And so that kind of economic impact, you think about the fact that the net worth of uh, you know, young people was actually decreasing over time, even when we we're looking at 2019, causing people to push out life milestones, having kids, uh, owning a house. And then you look at that kind of economic number around unemployment, and that impact will have some staggering effects. What are those effects? There's both the, the changes that we see, which are there are certain types of businesses that were already struggling um, under thin margins, under the, uh, the high cost of real estate, as an example, um, that then caused their own economics, uh, their margins to become even slimmer over time. I think that's gonna be really, really tough. And so what we're really counting on, and as I think about it from the, the tech sector, is there a way to create more abundance, not just disruption in the world, but how do you empower the solopreneurs as an example to then be able to have an Iron Man suit, to then actually go out and build their own businesses and I think that's what we're going to see out of the destruction is these opportunities to then create real entrepreneurship. So how are you advising your portfolio companies and how are you advising entrepreneurs? Like how much do they conserve cash? How much do they cut back? How much do they double down? Absolutely. One of the things that we talk about is how do you become anti-fragile as a company and being anti-fragile means actually not being dependent on your investors. So the longer term you are able to have in terms of your cash supply, we're not talking about how much dollars you have, but how much time you have, because we believe that outlasting your competitors is going to be even more important than outspending them in this new cycle. Now, this is just something I've been thinking about. Diversity, I know, is an important issue for you, and it's something that Silicon Valley has actually been working on. And yet, I, now we're in the middle of this crisis, and I worry that progress will be lost. Like, mm -hmm. investors might double down on what they know, which is male entrepreneurs. Obviously, you see companies cutting off large swaths of their workforces. You know, that could be maybe an opportunity in a weird way to change the ratio, or you lose some of the progress that you've made because you're not thinking about that as, as a first priority. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> do you, do yeah. you think about that? And Absolutely. do you have concerns that we could lose some of the progress we've made on diversity and investing in women, given that we're in the middle of a crisis? I absolutely am concerned about that. And this is a place where, especially the group that I'm involved with, All Rays, uh, we have our eyes on exactly what happens through this crisis. And in fact, it's not just about female investors. We want to make sure that the executives and the individual contributors who are now part of the tech ecosystem, that they are not impacted in a way that we really retract from the progress that we've made. Um, I think that this is the time and place to continue to invest into these these issues and to con continue to invest into the talent that we already have. Uh, my hope is that we don't backtrack from the progress that we've made. So last question, where do you see at Floodgate opportunities? Like where do you see an opportunity to double down on new trends, not knowing exactly where the trends are gonna go? Yeah, so, so going back to this idea of the solopreneur, we are we continue to become more interested in this space and some people talk about it as being the passion economy i think of it as a larger trend where individuals believe that they need to count on themselves in order to have the job that they want or to to be able to fulfill how they want to balance their work with their own lives and and so we believe that there are businesses to be built to empower these solopreneurs either from a financial standpoint or from software standpoints to be able to compete with these larger companies. A good example of that is a company that I've backed called Dumpling, 
which provides uh, grocery shoppers with the opportunity to build their own business and their own book of clientele. And they've been doubling revenues every week as a result of what we see out with COVID. And that relationship that the clientele can have with the shopper itself, that person um, actually creates great opportunity um, for, for companies like Dumpling. But we see opportunities like that throughout the marketplace.